the red shop presentation basically last year we um, we did our red CRM presentation which is an add-on for red shop and around 10 seconds into the presentation people said hey could you do a red shop presentation instead <laughs> so we figured this year we would actually do a red shop presentation and and try to dig in what's coming in the future also and and what's the direction red shop has so uh, rather briefly to start with, there's something skewed and up there. I'm, I'm, I don't think I'm not that slim. So, but yeah, I'm not complaining. So, but my name is Ronnie, and uh, I'm the uh, CEO of uh, Red Web, Red Host, I Red Host, Red Component, etc., uh, etc. Et and um, you see, I, I have 18 years of experience in um, in IT. Um, I basically started building websites in 93, so I've been a back-end, a front-end, uh, all sorts of things. So um, today I mainly uh, write emails and talk to people on the phone and uh, pretend to be working, but um, I still get to do a few things once in a while. Anyways, um, Red Shop has gone through a process from Red Shop 1.0 to 1.1, and now we're working on Red Shop 1.2. Part of the story behind Red Shop is that we wanted to do fantastic e-commerce sites, but we wanted our front end to be able to do them. We didn't want to have to spend like 200 development hours on hacking Virtumart like we used to. And I've built like 100 Virtumart websites, so been there, done that, got the t-shirt. But we wanted to, to let it be possible for people with only HTML and CSS skills to be able to build a complete web shop without knowing a line of PHP. And that's actually possible today. So you, you can do your custom fields, your CCK, your templates and everything, and you can template it up directly in the Joomla template. And that's a pretty important feature because it means your, your web shop is, is, is suddenly like a power tool or, or a set of tools you can use instead of a fixed component that can only do one thing. So <coughs> it's, it's on my screen it's, it's like this and up there it's like this. I'm like, what's going on? Anyways, uh, when you install Red Shop, the first thing you'll get into is the dashboard. And the dashboard has had quite some uh, involvement too. Now you can actually customize it so you can do like uh, quick icons, you can decide if you want statistics out of the news, orders and elements like that. Um, but in general, dashboard is an attempt to try and make it even more easy to get the overview and get into the right places. Um, so um, <coughs> the dashboard is also part, partly adjustable now and in the future we, the thought is you'd be able to add more modules as you would like to use them, but also in Joomla 2.5 and beyond. Some of those modules would perhaps be more interesting to have on the actual dashboard of Joomla when you log in. So, but that's part of the uh, development we're going into. Now, um, one of the newer things we did in Red 1.1 was add a configuration wizard. And the, the sense behind that is that Red Shop is a big e-commerce system. We build e-commerce uh, sites for clients that cost 10,000, 20,000, 50,000, 100,000 euros. So, so this is not your run-of-the-mill web shop that's done in two minutes. There's actually a lot of potential, a lot of size in it, but it also requires a lot of features, a lot of possibilities. But, but like when you install Red Shop and you go into configuration, if you only have two minutes to spend, don't install Red Shop. Find something like K2 Mart or something simple. <laughs> but if you want to build a proper e-commerce website and really have the right tools to do that, then go for Red Shop, spend 30 minutes in the configuration, know the abilities and the options, and figure out what you can do with it. There's a whole lot of, of, of uh, features and possibilities. If I do a full Red Shop presentation of all features, it would take me six to eight hours to cover everything. So it says a bit about how much there is. 
Um, Sean was sitting down here just recently published uh, the new wiki for Red Shop. So on wiki.redcomponent.com we have a new wiki now. Today it's mainly descriptive. In the future it will also have a lot of tips and tricks and how to get easier started and stuff like that. But on general approach we started rather techy or rather nerdy with an internal tool for ourselves to use in our consultancy business. Now we're gradually making it more and more human friendly. <laughs> so you can get, get on with it and you can just get started with RedShop even though you don't have uh, five years as a front-ender as experience, you could actually use some standards, some defaults. Right now, it's, it's coming in a bit, but we're working on a template. I'll show that in a bit, and we will also be moving on to content packages that could fit any template and stuff like that to make the deployment a lot easier. So you install RedShop, you install a template or content package, and your first job would be running in 10 minutes too. So, another thing that's coming rather soon you might notice that in the top corner, corner there's no settings for the ACL, so the, that's coming the 1.2 also. Now, <coughs> when, when, when you do um, e-commerce in general, there's a few key features that you would use to sell the product to your client, of course. There's also a few key features where RedShop does things that no other system does or nearly no other systems would do. One of those is actually action emails. There's, there are some possibilities of doing third-party integrations, but here it's built in, so you can send up to three automatic emails to customers. Now, consider sending an email after three months with a 5% discount code, you're, and you're selling 10,000 orders a year, well, you would actually be raising the turnover in, in your web shop with little to no effort. You would do the mail one time, and it'll all be automated. So very simple to use. Um, another key feature is, of course, the template system. RedShop is a CCK system, so if you need to use eight new fields in your product sheets, or want to do a, a, like a, a data sheet for all of your products, you can do the fields, you can put it in the product template you utilize for these, or a certain product type, and it will get out. But now, if you want to template override it, to make it different. All of the tags you get when you do custom fields are all available in the normal template system in Joomla. So all the templates we do for our clients are all purely native Joomla templates. It's, it's pure template overrides. We don't do anything else. Uh, we will be moving towards Twitter Bootstrap and less, but right now all we do is completely free of frameworks in terms of the templating levels. <coughs> now, um, Another um, quite interesting thing we have is RedShop is not a campaign system. It's not MailChimp on crack in a web shop. It's not a lot of other things. What it's good at is actually adding a layer of business intelligence. So you can go in and you can do a segment. You can pick out the customers who've been shopping on your web shop for the last six to 18 months, who's been buying more than three or four orders in your store, who has bought certain products or from a certain category, and you can pick out and combine that with demographic values like uh, postal codes or countries or whatever. Then you can do your segment and you can send them a new uh, a, a targeted newsletter. But you could also utilize the uh, Akiba integration and push over the new segment into a specific list in Akiba. And, and um, Akiba Enterprise, I don't know if any of you have tried it, but it's a, a super good system. And in many ways, it competes with uh, Campaign Monitor or MailChimp and others because it has a lot of the, the added um, statistics and tracking, bounds handling, automatic rule sets and all sorts of things. So, so you can make a segment here and you can push it to a cube, um, a cube and then you could actually use this as part, part, part of your email campaigns. The thing is, in traditional web shops, you send out an email to 10,000 people, you would do like a conversion rate on 0.08% or something like that. But if you send out 10 emails to 1,000 people each, that is actually uh, relevant for them based on their shopping history, your conversion rates could be 3% or 5% or 8%, depending on how good you are at picking the right segments and, and adjusting your dialogue with the customers to that segment. Another part of that is also the relationship management part of your customers. 
if, if any of you have shopped on a website and they start sending you newsletters because you signed up for it and you get three newsletters in a row with products that are not relevant for you, you would go off the newsletter. And then you lose the opportunity to sell products to people in the future. So you want to do a positive relation with your customers. And so you only want to send them newsletters that is actually relevant for them as based on what they want to buy in the future. Some of the killer examples is like people went into the shop, they bought the 2010 model and two years later there's a 2012 model. You send out an email to everyone who bought the 2010 model saying, wow, next Friday we're getting the 2012 model and you do a 28% conversion rate. That's an insane newsletter. So by spending a little more time of finding the segments, doing the right audience and mailing them the proper information, you can do a lot more sales. Something like that is very critical for, for business owners, of course. Now, um, as a lot of you would know, RedShop has built in search engine optimization tools and it happens with um, sh 44 f uh, But RedShop wears the pants and also told this last year, Basically, it means that RedShop will control sh 44 f So when you go into the products, the third tab would say SEO. You click that and you can adjust the page head, the page title, language, setting, meter description, meter keywords. You can pick which category is the primary category to be used for the Ceph, uh, search engine friendly URL and other really important settings. But these settings need to be part of the tool set when you're running a web shop, if you can't access and change these elements, you don't have full control of your web shop and you need to do that today. You can also, the, the SEO tab is also available under manuf manufacturers and in categories. So as you're naturally working with your website, you can do the SEO while you actually work with it. So it's, it's not a magical process. <laughs> uh, there's not a, a, a lot of complicated system. It's very straightforward and it's quite simple. Now the interesting part is, if you haven't done anything manually, it would use the configurations way of setting up a rule set for automatic SEO handling. And it would automatically do headings, uh, page titles, meter descriptions, etc., based on the simple rules that you create. So it's very uh, accessible. Now that's the SEO tab for the product handling. And as you can see, all the, all the fields are here, the most relevant fields. In the future, there will also be a field for canonical URL and over the time, as we see more and more uh, rich snippets in different aspects, we would add the most cru cru crucial one coming, uh, coming from, cru from Google mainly, basically. But um, that's pretty much, much it. Another aspect is right now we have a, an economic.com integration that's very complex in RedShop, actually. Um, in the future, we will also be doing like QuickBooks or for the UK, uh, cash, cow, what, what I believe it's called, and there's other alternatives with online software as a service-based ERP accounting systems. A lot of the advantage of that is that in, in Northern Europe, you can use economic.com and it will cost you like 20 euros a month and you get completely automated accounting. Everything is just done for you. So RedShop will open up, do the debtors, do the invoice, do the product lines, do everything, pull back the invoice and send it out all of the product categories that are tied to your accounting plans and the web shop and the company will also be related. So everything is completely ready to use. In the future, as I said, there will be a lot more integrations available in different markets. <coughs> now, that's just a few of the highlights. I don't know if you can see it, but um, down below here, we have the direct relational table to the product group in the ERP accounting system. So you can enter all the accounts, the counter accounts, VAT accounts and stuff like that. In most web shop systems, having an understanding of this and a relation like this, integration options like this in the default core would not be something you should expect. <laughs> but it's really valuable because people that run a web shop don't want to spend time on manually entering stuff into the accounting system. They want different forms of integrations. Now, this is kind of a fixed integration, but we also have nine different formats for CSV files. We've got an XML engine for creating XML imports or XML exports. And the combination of the CSV files, the XML engine, which can be scheduled and on demand, it's more of a like, mini web services uh, XML engine, basically, where you can create everything. 
And this, these fixed system integrations and the coming one means that you will actually have a wide variety of options and, and possibilities to do all sorts of integrations. <coughs> and of course, um, as you can see, there's a lots, lots and lots of configuration options. Uh, right here, this is from uh, the config, of course. We're under the general tab here, and there's a lot of other tabs. But uh, re remember, RedShop, uh, the main component, as well as all of our other components, are completely free. So download it, install it, look at the configuration, um, try it out. But um, in, in a futuristic approach, or rather in, in the years to come, these elements would be tied to either the ACL or a different form of stripping down some of the elements. So if you want to run in a basic mode, perhaps, we would hide a lot of the fields. They would still be there. But to make it more, more easy to get the bigger picture for people who aren't that experienced, the hardcore web shop builders and stuff like that, we, we want to scale a few of the things down, not like remove it, but remove the, visu the visible parts of them if you're not using them. <coughs> now, we have a lot of features in RedShop, of course. Um, and basically, I'm not going to spend time going through these uh, slides, but outside there's a RedShop product uh, flyer, and you can get it and you can see some of the main features too. Um, <coughs> one thing, however, I would uh, use a little time on is our product finder. Uh, RedShop has a product finder extension, which is an independent component. You can build your own search engines. So that means that if you want to allow customers to search in a certain way of logics in your web shop, you can create the search form, the types, the tags you can relate to your products. Now, this is actually a web shop search engine that you can uh, invent, you can develop, you can do the relations. It's completely arbitrary, so it's not tied to any, any, anything physically in the web shop. It's a relational search system where you can completely change it. Now say I have a web shop where I would allow people to search for red products for boys between six and eight years of age, and they should be fun and it should fit in the forest. I can do a search form for that and I can do the relations. My products might not contain any information at all, whether it was for boys or girls or what age or what price or whatever. But because it's an arbitrary system, I'm able to do it completely as I want to. Now, coming up in the Christmas sales, one of the biggest sellers is, of course, doing a gift finder. So you would do a gift finder for boys or for girls, the price ranges, certain other aspects, how cute is it, and stuff like that. And people will fill it out, and it will create a lot of additional sales because people are able to use your web shop in a different way. It's also a matter of every search would do a completely unique content page that's search engine optimized with a search engine friendly URL. So if you link to these pages, basically new landing pages you're generating through your custom, uh, your custom product finder, you can keep making new content that Google picks up. So instead of just having a classical view of categories and products, with rather straightforward entry points for, for the search engine robots, you would now have diagonal lines or arbitrary connections throughout your web shop with uniquely uh, content that Google can pick up. And that's following a long tail strategy that will vastly increase the, uh, the sales too because you will be able to be found on a lot of things where other people wouldn't have a chance. Now, I'll just flip through these things uh, and let you find it elsewhere. Now, we get to the future of RedShop. Uh, how, uh, how, how many minutes to go? <laughs> Anyone got the time? So we have like, I don't know, 20 minutes or something. Yeah, okay. So in the future of RedShop, we'll be focusing a lot more on, um, on a lot of new integrations. Basically, we are picking out countries around the world we will be doing uh, bank integrations, additional payment integrations, we'll be doing shipping integrations. We always try and uh, tell people to join our open translator teams to, uh, to help translate RedShop uh, in all sorts of uh, countries and languages. 
And right now, I think we have 60 different teams working on languages uh, for RedShop. Uh, so if you want to translate RedShop to a certain language, uh, do uh, join in and, and take part in it. Once we have a language that's on 100% for our country, we will actively go out, pick out a few payment integrations or bank integrations and shipping integrations, and we would finish those prioritized, because then we are ready for a new country. So if, if, if you commit some language translations, we will commit a lot of integrations. So it should be a win-win situation. <coughs> now, uh, one of the other things we're working on uh, is, of course, a brand new uh, website for redcomponent.com that will uh, add another f a lot of new features. But one of the features is tied to RedShop, actually, and it's an automatic upgrader. So when you're inside RedShop, you can click on a button, and it will call home and figure out what needs to be upgraded. And you can click a button, and it will upgrade it. Of course, as a commercial extension, we cannot, for, for all of the add-ons, we can't use the built-in Joomla upgrader because we would need to call hack it and stuff like that, so we have our own version, but it's tied to a website. Now, the next thing we're working on is, uh, is templates for RedShop, uh, but actually, in the next eight weeks, we'll release 10 templates, uh, native templates with RedShop support fully built into it. So I'm thinking with 10 templates, this should be something to work with for everyone. <laughs> but we will be adding a, a new template every six or eight weeks um, in the future too, to make it easy for people to get started. Now, another thing um, we're working on, and we started implementing, is a PHP documenter uh, to do technical um, documentation, basically, to have an automated process for doing technical documentation. And we put up uh, the first beta version internally now, but in the future, all of our components, including RedShop, would have a public place to go and look in the, the public documentation. So when you're sitting and want to do something with RedShop, it's rather simple finding a method or an object and then figuring out through the comments what's going on and having to look through all the files and have no idea what, what it's called, etc. So that will help people on a higher technical level that wants to customize RedShop or do integrations or other things like that. Now, um, <coughs> content and styling kits is, is more like at the inner frame. So when you install RedShop and you're using some template that's already built for the website or from some template club or something, and you want the inner contents to look more in that direction, we will work on having like eight default content packages. So to get RedShop up, up and running quickly, you could pick a content package, deploy it, and it would look pretty good on any template, basically. So that's coming in the future, too. Now, part of our new website is also today with RedShop. You get RedShop for free. You get four modules and four plugins for free. If you want the rest, you have to get a, a pro subscription at 249 euros. Then you get access to 120 more extensions for RedShop. But in the future, we'll be doing them as single sales too. So if you only want the bank integration in Greece or the shipping integration in the US or whatever, then you go and grab that one extension and, and just pay for that. So it should make it more flexible for people depending on what they want to do. <coughs> now, that's actually the screenshot of the automatic updater on our new website. It hasn't been popularized yet, of course, but that's how it's looking. Now, the thing is here also, you can add new domains. So even though uh, you only have, you have one account, instead of getting new accounts of, uh, for pro subscriptions for nine years each, you can just add a new domain to the list, and we will automatically update that one too. But of course, if, you're do, if you've done 20 websites for clients, adding the domain name 20 times here and everything running automated is a pretty good deal for you. <laughs> you won't have to use, spend any time on doing it. So it should help a lot of people. <coughs> now, this is examples of the two first templates that are going out, fashion store and our movie-themed templates. Um, <coughs> and as you can see, we just summarized it, all, all the basic uh, elements of the templates. Uh, but I think it went through most of it already. An example of the technical documentation, how it looks on our internal beta today. You can see you can search the different elements and classes and stuff like that, so it, it makes it a lot easier to do more complicated or technical things with RedShop. 
compared to guessing or, or doing multi-file searches and stuff like that. So um, this is part of our Red Shop product page, landing page on our new website. Yeah, as you can see, we're actually building the new Red component site on Red Shop, and part of that is also uh, adding a complete new subscription system that's tied into the ACL in Joomla 2.5. So all of these uh, groups you see are actually just categories with products in them that are single sale products. We also get the pro subscription, get access to everything. So we're, we're, we're taking our own medicine. We're using Red Shop on the Red component side and we're evolving it along with the process. So Red Shop 1.2 will contain all of the key features we're using to build the new red component side too. <coughs> now, here's a, a few examples of uh, web shops we did, uh, just um, uh, briefly here. I took these examples along to show like there's no common denominator. It, a web shop doesn't have to look in any certain way. If you go to our office in Denmark, next to the coffee machine, there's a big red circle and inside in black letters it says, if you can draw it, you can do it. Well, if you're doing websites, if you can draw it, you can do it. That's the approach to doing e-commerce sites. <coughs> this is one of the, actually the website that is nominated for the Just Cause, um, for the best e-commerce site. It's called villamin.dk and of course, um, in my experience, you won't, you won't find a lot of Joomla e-commerce sites on this level uh, visually. If we go through a few of the slides here, you can see everything is, is completely built. And it's just native template, native Joomla template. No, no core hacks, no nothing, no nothing. And a template overrides for the red shop part. <coughs> so you can do a lot of things basically. And the, the checkout here. And the thing is, like with Red Shop, if you go down to the checkout, there's sub-elements. If you go into the product page, there's also sub-templates. So the add to cart is a sub-template. The show attributes is a sub-template sub too. So you can combine them. You could have four different ways of doing add to cart. One with, with, with amounts, one without amounts, in different styles, whatever. And then those four could be combined into 10 different product templates. So you can basically pull the things together as you want to gives a high, uh, a high um, yeah, custom, custom ability. Um, let me just see here. Yeah. I just wanted to um, <coughs> check if we got internet here. Um, and now I need to log in again. I wanted to show you the, the, the demo side. Uh, maybe it's possible anyways. Let's see. <sighs> the brain is a bit slow after yesterday. <laughs>
No, it doesn't work any longer. We're going to try again. Thank you. What? No, it. Are you online? Okay. We we'll just uh, swap out the laptop here. Yeah. Now, the new demo site isn't publicly released yet, but it's actually live. I did it the other day. And the demo site is built on Joomla 2.54 and Retro 1.110. With uh, the first template, we're going to release the Fashion Store template. So uh, that's where it is. <coughs> so we, if we scroll down a bit here, see the elements of the template, and yeah. You can actually log into this site on redshop.demo.redcomponent.com and give it a spin. Just click the button in the side and you can log in. <coughs> and basically, yeah, that's the template. Uh, we just try and go into a product too. Actually, we have a product page here. Size selections, quantities, additional images, and stuff like that. The thing is, in RedShop, when you are showing size selections or attribute selections, you can also do it visually. So if you upload a picture for each attribute and a main picture, you can do a visual selector. So all those drop downs you have, and a lot of e commerce sites you don't really need any longer, you can do it visually too. But that's also part of a sub template system. So you can decide to do it on some product pages and not on others. So you can change how it looks to in any side. But that's actually the new demo side, and uh, do uh, try and lock in and give it a spin, and you can see how the new template is too. And the template will come out in a few weeks as the first one. So um, <coughs> I think we are about at the time where I should ask if anyone has some questions. So uh, any questions? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you can you can do that. You can take in one category. We want to show four products per line. Another category is we only want one product per line. But then you can also assign the allowed templates per category. So if you want to do a selector in the top where the user could swap between three different views, then you could also select those. So in one page, you could allow them to select between three, diff three different categories. In other words, you could force them to only see four, four products per page. You do a thumbnail-style category with yeah massive amount of, of images instead. There's absolute freedom doing all of this. I can show you an example of a customer site that uh, utilizes a lot of interesting things. Let me just see. I think I zoomed here. Oh, well. This is one of our um, customers' uh, website called Le Bac. They sell uh, security shoes and other products now. And now basically, I think I actually accidentally zoomed a bit before, so we might be zoomed in, I don't know. Now, um, you see here, here we also have the product finder. So you could say, well, 
which category we want to search in, security footwear, which product type, well, I want, uh, want boots, and which uh, second one, I want fire and rescue, and which sex, well, I don't care, but I could also state that. Now, if I click search, then I, I get up, up, this is the search page from Red Product Finder, and as you can see, the page title up here is search engine optimized, depending on the choices I just did. The search engine friendly address and the URL is also done. Now when we get down here, you can see these fields are custom fields. So when you do a product here, and these fields up here are, are tied to custom fields and attributes, and if you go into categories, you can actually use some of those to filter the category outputs too and select only products in a certain size, or only for men, or only for female, or whatever you want to combine it to do it. Now, <coughs> this page is a pretty complex product page, and in most e-commerce systems, you would sit and do like the fact boxes, the icons, all of this you do into what you see, what you get editor, and it would take ages to do a product. A product like this would take you under two minutes to do here. You just create it, you give it a name, uh, a product uh, S SKU, a product number, and you put in the text into what you see, what you get, editor. Then you click over to custom fields and you pick on the icons. Well, it's security heels, it's made of steel, and etc. etc. So you click it down there and you hit save, and your product is done. So instead of spending 30 minutes or 45 minutes on each product, you can do a product in two minutes. And, and you can use it differently on the website too. So there's a lot of uh, possibilities in, in doing a system like this and allowing for so much freedom, basically. <coughs> but let's try and go into a plain category here. You see, here we have each of the products in the list here. There's like, wh what size is it? Which uh, segments is it good for? Which sex is it? What's the product number? It's, you can take any field you create for the products any custom field can also be used in category levels. So, so you just do what you want to do. You, it's, the possibilities in this system is endless. It does require you know, a bit of HTML and CSS to really get something good of it. But if you know HTML and CSS, yeah, there's no boundaries. So we do a lot of websites for clients. Everyone is completely unique, looks completely different. Com new set of fields, whatever. Really easy to work with. <coughs> also, if you notice there, we added multiple selectors in the top of the category template. So the, the, the sex uh, or, the, or the segment we have here, we, we put them basically up as filters. And we're doing that in this kind of category template. In a different category template, we could offer other options. So if you have you're selling computers and you're selling clothes, you don't want the same filtering options. Of course, you want to have them individually. So very, very easy to work with. <coughs> um, yeah, I don't know, it's 15.30. Are we done? How long we have to, to go? 15 minutes, 10 minutes, super. Um, but I don't know, perhaps I should, uh, I should sh show you a few more examples of uh, how it could be done, how a website could look. Um, <coughs> Um, let's, we could also take uh, another one here. This one here did 500 orders a day in the Christmas sale uh, last year. So we did uh, a complete automated order batch process. So they go in, they check off 100 orders, they set their status to change to shipped from paid, and you click save status changes. Then the order batch process so will start up, open up each order, will contact economic.com, will do the invoice, pull back the invoice, send it out to the customer, contact the payment gateway, capture the money, uh, then open a packaging note uh, for each of the products in a PDF, and then it will also send 100 uh, shipping labels out through the shipping integration. So then they take the 100 shipping labels and the 100 packaging notes, go into the stockroom and they start packing. So um, there's a lot of possibilities in this. Now, this, this is a fun website. It's not the prettiest website, but 
it sells uh, known brand products at a lesser price than everyone else. It's called the price pressure. <laughs> um, but the funny thing about um, working with this website was that um, we did some tweaking, some AP split testing on the product page level. And I could share a, a, a small story here. Now, one of the things to sell is Legos, and, uh, and it's the cheapest place to buy Legos in Denmark, actually, is doing it from this website. Now, also, things like, like here, it's on sale, so when it gets the big sale sticker on top of it, that's also part of the core, actually. You can do that. You can set it up with CSS, etc., how you want to do it. Now, it's still uh, transferring imaging here, but um, once it's done loading, And see, we get all the products out here. Now, if we go into it, this website did a conversion rate on 5.2% in the Christmas sales. And 5.2% conversion is not a bad number. Let's just get that out there. But the last, I don't know, the last 0.8% of the conversion we got on this and this. So remember, we ship it in one to two days, there's free shipping. Just writing it on all product pages. And the turnover went up by 18%. So it, it says some, something about small details and how you can continue to work with things. So it's important to be in a system where you can actually add this as new custom fields, add them to the template levels, implement them so it will go out throughout the web shop. You need the tools to be able to change things around to do those. And if you can do an 18% conversion, uh, or rather an 18% turnover increase by putting in a line of text in a custom field globally across all the product templates in, in five minutes of work, that's not a bad working day. Let's just uh, make that clear. So, um, <clears throat> but we, of course, we do uh, a, a lot of red shops. Um, I think one of the other ones we did um, it's not the quickest internet to show anything on. Yeah, it's it's loading slowly, slowly, but it's loading at least. I think uh, everyone needs to stop using the cell phone. Okay. This is just to show you that in terms of the sign on this page, we're in a completely different scenario again, completely different way of using um, the and stuff like that. Of course, it's hard to see, but um, hopefully it is, it'll get in there. But uh, any other questions while we wait on the loading? For which language? No, it's not multilingual supported. Please repeat the question, otherwise it's not okay. Okay, yeah. Is it multilingual or has multi language support? And no Redshift does not have multi language support as it is now. But it's because the solutions for doing multi language support is so bad that we would never do them for a client. I would never do multi language support in Joomla 2.5. If you can make a e-commerce uh, website. Yeah, you can make uh, an e-commerce. No, but the multilingual e-commerce website. If the what? Can it be a German okay. version, English version? Ah, yeah, yeah. You can use the XML engine for doing that. Basically, instead of trying to to do one installment in ten languages, we 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 do it in one language, then we clone it, and then you can use the XML engine to connect each of the product uh, product inventories to stock rooms. Or you could send product dates over from your main site to the other websites and then change the descriptions that you want to do. But in general, if you want, the, it's an old concept, but you have a web shop in one market, then you go out to two new markets with different languages. If you do that from one domain name, your secondary languages would never get in the search engines. 
So you would have to clone your website, put it on an independent domain or subdomain name, and then you would have a chance of actually running a business in a secondary language, because the search engines would see it as a primary language. Now, to do that, then you also get the opportunity to localize your content. The 10 products that are selling well in Denmark won't be the same 10 products selling well in Germany or in France or any other place. So you have to do local adjustments, shipping plugins, payment integrations, mentality, culture, etc. etc. So, so having individual websites and then connecting some of the base data, like the amount of products and stuff, uh, stock and stuff like that, is super important. But we didn't want to invent the wheel. We really want part of these elements to be in the Joomla core for exchanging certain forms of content, whether it's product data or it's articles or whatever it is. So earlier today I was also in the, in the um, I was in two work groups, but one of them was the multi-site uh, work group session. Uh, and part of what I took part in the debate for was figuring out how to get a foundation for doing it more global approach for all of our extensions and for others too. So it's something we're quite aware of, but in the current meth method and way of doing it, we've decided not to do the full multi-language support in one installation because we wouldn't do it for a client. It, it, serious, it wouldn't be serious enough as we couldn't utilize the value in the search engines. Yeah, but this is the other one I was showing. Just to show you, again, completely different designs. I'll try and load another page. It's a category page. Oh no, there's actually a bit more speed up there. And here, of course, um, there's a lot of text, a lot of value for the search engines. I'm not sure any human would read all of the text, but in this case, it's a matter of attracting the right people. Then they can go in and pick by the different brands, the different products here. And it's basically just subcategories. So now we're at the level where we have, uh, let's go into the dagger. This is, this is actually the manufacturer uh, hierarchy throughout the web shop. The thing is, in Red Shop, you have four dimensions. You have, of course, the product dimension, you have the category dimension, you have the manufacturer dimension, and the menu item dimension. If we have the product finder dimension also, it's a five-dimensional system. So it's 5D e-commerce. That sounds advanced, but, uh, but in reality, it's a matter of having the opportunity to make your website able to allow a lot of paths in from outside, from search engines, etc., for people to find your products and buy them, or for the people you build websites for. So, um, but but basically, we used Red Shop to build a lot of e-commerce websites, and we are not we're not cheap uh, in, uh, in those projects. Of course, we we make good projects, but we get paid for every hour spent. And we're using these tools ourselves every day in every way in all of our projects. It's exactly the same extensions that are up on redfront.com. So, any more questions? Is it possible to sell digital products like ebooks? Yeah, we have a download section, and, and you can also do multiple formats. So, if you have had it in MP3 or Windows Media Player or whatever you wanted to. You also sell digital images actually. So so that's in there. It's it's still it's still utilizing a download token system, which is not ideal and we want to change that. But but you can sell digital projects and, and you can have alternative file methods. You can even upload a CSV file with serial numbers. So whenever someone buys a product, it will pick one of your serial numbers and send to the client who bought the product. So it can deploy serial numbers to software too. So, so there's, there's a ton of features in Red Shop. As I said, it'll take me six to eight hours to explain all of them. So lock in on the demo site uh, or download a copy and install it and, and give it some time. Give it 30 minutes or 60 minutes. And it's, an, uh, it's a whole new world that will open to you of possibilities. And once you spend the first hour or so, it starts to get drastically easier to, to, to work with when you have the overviews. So, um, yes? 
Any other questions? Nope. Then I'd like to say uh, thank you all. Thank you.